Many Christian slave owners would use the Bible to support slavery. Not only that the Bible does support slavery, but that attempts to prove otherwise are almost always based on a lack of understanding about the context of certain biblical verses. So let's quickly get to the background of this before I answer why the Bible supported slavery. Before slavery was abolished, so many things were used by slave masters to keep slaves in submission, some of which include whipping, branding, slave codes, and the Bible. During this period, slaves were not allowed to read any other book except the Bible. Not just the Bible, but the slave Bible. This is a separate Bible for the slaves, and the difference is not about what's included in it, but what's not in it. The slave Bible is just a normal Bible, minus verses such as, Let my people go. There is neither bond or free, for we are one in Christ. Jeremiah's woe unto him that uses his neighbor's service without wages, all of which could call for emancipation of slaves. So, since the original Bible included all this, can we say the original Bible doesn't support slavery and neglect where it said, Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you? then you may pass them on as inheritance to your sons after you to inherit as permanent possession. Slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity of art, just as you would obey Christ. Many YouTube channels have tried to counter claims that the Bible does support slavery. While they ignore the verses and they try to reshape the Bible's concept of slavery, by either claiming it's to help the poor or that the Bible only regulates it. Verse 44 to 46 of Leviticus chapter 45 and others doesn't agree with this at all. However, the later part of the verse later made it clear that some set of people should not be enslaved. And this is where we can trace our answer to why the Bible supports slavery. The Bible does not only support slavery but also supports the kind of transatlantic slave trade which is racist slavery. At one point in time of the Bible, God had chosen Abraham and Israelites to be his people, and this is so throughout the whole of the Old Testament. God has always sided with the Israelites back then, even though he created the whole world. Now, let's get back to slavery. Slavery existed as far back as human history can be traced, so Slavery is a human culture and normal to humans. When God started interfering in the matters of slavery, God made it clear that he doesn't support slavery of his own people or chosen people. Leviticus chapter 45 verse 46 says, But you must not subject your Israelite brothers to cruel treatment. The Bible also made the law that if an Israelite becomes poor and sells himself as slave, he should not be treated as slave and should be free after some years. So many people while interpreting the Bible fails to have it in mind that God in that part of the Bible is for the Israelites. If you want to argue about this, okay, how do you explain the Israelites' act of having to destroy several cities on their way to promised land with God's backup? The only part of the Bible where God become God for every race is after Jesus came to the earth that all may be saved. The gospel must first be preached to all nations. The angel said, Don't be afraid, I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. And it is during and after this period that the Bible started going against slavery. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. However, the early church doesn't have the authority or power to make or enforce an anti-slavery law. They are even facing persecutions already, so you can still find some verses that advises that a slave should be good to his master and a master to be fear in return. So you are welcome to Days of Food. I make videos about African history, cultures and issues in history just like this. Subscribe if you like us.